So Spanish-speaking missionary work in the United States definitely an interesting, uh, dif if different, you know, aspect of missionary work. Uh, learning the language is, is a little different than being in a Spanish-speaking country, uh, just because you're not saturated with the language. And so, taking advantage of language study every day was huge. Um, just taking that hour or 30 minutes to really study. I'd say that my mission was 30% Spanish and the rest was English. And so. Uh, just taking advantage of the opportunities, even though people could speak Spanish and English, you know, just starting the conversation in Spanish was a big deal. And you could tell the missionaries that really took advantage of that and, and spoke more Spanish and those that didn't. And uh, most of the people that we taught were from Mexico. Uh, it was interesting because each area there was different state in Mexico, they kind of settle with those in, in there from their own state. And so in Eugene, it was mostly from Oaxaca and other states, other areas was from Jalisco and Guadalajara, just different places. And so um, the biggest stressor, I believe, with the Hispanics there in, in Oregon, both those from Mexico and Guatemala was the other large majority, uh, minority of, <laughs> of the Hispanics that were there was just the legal issues, the legal complexities um, with working and traveling, uh, having a driver's license and being able to find adequate work that was stable. And so lots of the times you'd see everyone would be gathered out on a corner ready for someone to come pick them up in a 15 passenger van to take them to work for the day. And it was very short contracts and so work and just providing for their family it's amazing how much time and energy they had to spend in order to support uh, a family and very i know that one out of every three children born in oregon is hispanic and so even with the minority they have the uh, kind of a, the upper hand it's just a very family oriented and uh Trailer parks is where I spent my mission, and uh, so every time I see a trailer park here in, in Utah, it's just like reminiscent of, you know, you know that everyone, or the majority of the people in there are, are those that I would be contacting on my mission, and so there's a lot of poverty, uh, a lot of difficult situations, a lot of people coping with the stresses by turning to substances, alcohol and such, and so uh catholicism was uh their their thing there was a lot of jehovah witnesses cath uh that had converted from catholicism uh of the hispanics and being in a in an english speaking mission there was probably about 11 missionaries that were spanish and so i had the same companion in four different areas <laughs> and so it was lucky we got along he was also my mtc companion and but yeah we had a great time there was a spanish zone that we formed for a little while the zarahemla zone and it lasted for maybe two transfers and then we disbanded it because it was kind of difficult to you just don't get to meet with your other spanish missionaries very often and so as a you know, spanish speaking district leader and zone there you just teach in English and so there's limited opportunities to really teach other missionaries in Spanish and communicate with them in Spanish and so uh, just taking advantage of especially church I think Sunday was the greatest time to practice Spanish because uh, you are around members the whole time and so yeah that's kind of the the Spanish speaking world finding techniques definitely trailer park I uh, the Hispanics, in just from what I gathered, they love bright colors, kind of brought that from, I guess, culture in Mexico. So bright colored homes, a broom outside, frog statues, believe it or not, was very prominent. Um, fly traps, you name it. There's just all these different kinds of fly traps on doors and stuff, and that was definitely a identifier. There's a lot of different uh, things that you know, you could point out about, you know, finding uh, Saturdays, go to Walmart, and that's when everyone does their shopping Saturdays and Sundays. So we'd go and, and do finding in just 
shopping with, you know, helping people with the groceries and such. Yeah, so Guatemala and Mexico was the common, the majority, and then just scattered from all South America. I met people from Spain, from Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru. There's a lot of Peruvians. Peruvian food was the best. Uh, Ecuador, yeah, Panama. Um, just about, I think I, I wrote down all the countries that of people that I taught, and there was around 15 different you know, Spanish speaking countries. And so it's, it's, you get a, a wide variety of, you know, experiences, foods and cultures. So, so very hospitable when, when you do come into their home. I think that at one point in time, we just decided to measure, you could tell how many lessons you taught in a week by how many water bottles were in the back seat at the end of the day. Because every single time you go into their home, you know, they give you a water bottle and uh, just really nice uh, seeing whatever they can do to help you out and uh, just be accepting even even though they they do have little I think that that's um, kind of like a, a maybe even a pride issue if if you don't accept you know something that they're offering you and just being caring and very appreciative of, of what they do have because sometimes uh, they're giving you the best that they have as a you know meal or something. And so, yeah, just being very grateful for everything that, that they can, they do offer you.